from the University of Florida College of Journalism and Communications. You're watching WUFT News at 6. Severe weather is headed our way. Good evening. It's Thursday, August 21st. I'm James Torres. And I'm Ashlyn Reese. Let's head to the Weather Center where Deborah Alberto has the details. A strong storm alert is in effect for Putnam, St. John's and Flagler counties. Now this storm is moving very slowly to the south at around five miles per hour and is producing quite a bit of lightning over 700 strikes in the past 10 minutes. Again, the strong storm alert expires at 645 today. So if you have any plans of uh, heading out on the roadways, you might want to wait it out. The storm is very strong, uh, even though it has weakened slightly in the past 10 minutes or so. It still is producing significant amount of lightning. I'm going to track the storm for you here. Beckham Town at 610. You're going to see the storm 614 at Campville, 624 Edgar Lands and Ranch, 626 in Whiteville at 630. The storm is uh, capable of producing some strong winds at up to 60 miles per hour as well as a possibly quarter sized hail. Now the storm is weakening as I mentioned before so uh, the the strong storm alert does uh, expire in the at 645 but could still produce a significant amount of lightning in the next half hour. Take a look at this. This is our exclusive lightning tracker 118 strikes possible in the next 30 minutes. I'll continue to track this as well as tomorrow's heat in my main forecast. Back to you. Thanks a lot, Deborah. Now, temperatures outside are in the 90s, but it feels like it's in triple digits. And it will be just as hot tomorrow. WUFT's Virginia Hamrick has more on the heat and the homeless. A glass of water or a dive in a swimming pool is a refreshing break from the heat, but we don't always have those options. And for the homeless, the challenges can be especially daunting. But officials with Grace Marketplace, the recently opened homeless shelter in Northeast Gainesville, are trying to provide the homeless an escape from the sweltering temperatures. The ability to be inside here, to, to have access to air conditioning, um, to take care of your, your basic needs, your business, uh, while the, the room is climate controlled, is, is a big advantage over what uh, has been done for homeless folks in town up until this point. Grace Marketplace also offers showers and bottled water. Whether indoors or outdoors, the National Weather Service recommends taking frequent water breaks. A heat advisory is issued when temperatures feel like they're reaching triple digits. The National Weather Service advises people to seek shade, like the pavilion here at Grace Marketplace. Alachua County Emergency Services expects another heat advisory tomorrow, but they are hopeful for relief later this week. We're expected to have another one tomorrow, probably the roughly the same time frame, noon to eight. Uh, hopefully the, the high pressure system over the, the northern part of the state will break by then and uh, it will start cooling off by the weekend. Until that time, Donnelly recommends staying indoors and Grace Marketplace stores are staying open as a retreat for those with no other place to cool down. Virginia Hamrick, WUFT News. And people living in Alachua County can sign up for Code Red emergency notifications to know when a heat advisory is in effect. And an Ocala man is accused of leaving his three children in a car for hours outside a bar while he got drunk inside. A police report says an officer found 28-year-old Joshua DeLong outside of Dr. B's bar just after 2 this morning with a bleeding head. A security guard told officers that an angry patron had punched DeLong. Witnesses told the police DeLong left his children, ages 5, 7, and 8, in a gold Cadillac parked outside while he drank at the bar. The bar security guard called the police when DeLong tried to drive away with the kids. The Clay County Sheriff's Office needs help identifying three men who stole medical equipment from a Walgreens. The stolen items include heart rate monitors and diabetic test equipment that authorities believe the men plan to resell. The manager believes the equipment is worth close to $800. The men were last seen headed onto County Road 220 in a white four-door car. Anyone with information should contact the Clay County Sheriff's Office. A Columbia County man is in jail accused of stealing checks from a funeral home. On August 18th, police officers were called to Cooper Funeral Home in Lake City to investigate a fraud complaint. Officers say they determined that Calvin Manning Jr. stole 15 checks from the business and cashed them. On August 19th, they say Manning admitted to an officer that he committed the theft and fraud. Now, if you're planning to hit the road this Labor Day weekend, chances are your neighbor is too. AAA is predicting more people will travel away from home this Labor Day weekend than in the past six years. Its forecast calls for 34.7 million Americans to take the skies and roads. And with more than 86% of Labor Day vacationers likely to travel to the destinations by car, 
there's good news for drivers. AAA says gas should be more affordable than in the summer's past. And two World War II vets in Florida recently found out they're the last surviving members of a flight crew over Belgium in 1945. Sam Kessler and Harvey Stamper were both on a mission over Belgium in a B-24 called the Pale Ale when the plane experienced some problems they bailed out. They went their separate ways after the war, but Kessler's grandson conducted some research about the Pale Ale and its crew and learned that just hours separated the two men in Florida, so they reunited in Venice. Kessler's grandson presented the men with a piece of the engine from the wreckage site of the doomed B-24 sent from a historian. There is a monument in Belgium that honors all 10 crew members, including the three who died during the mission. Imagine waking up one morning and not being able to walk. What would you do if you spent your entire life dancing and suddenly you weren't able to move? WUFT's Amanda Clark has the story about a University of Florida student who experienced just that. Michelle Donato has been dancing ever since she was a little girl. Hours of dance classes every week would lead to big performances in front of large crowds that would cheer her on. In April of 2013, her first year of college, that all changed. It was April 21st. I actually went to bed the tw like on the 20th with tingling sensation in my feet. And then I woke up that morning where I could barely put weight on them and had to crawl down my bunk from the dorm room. Donato had to be taken to Johns Hopkins to find out exactly what happened and what they could do to fix it. Doctors had told Michelle Donato that she had suffered a spinal cord stroke. A spinal cord stroke often blocks blood flow to the spine, which prevents oxygen from getting there. This can often leave that person paralyzed. Once Donato and her family got the diagnosis, she started what would be a long journey of hard work and rehabilitation. At first, she couldn't walk. Then she progressed to being in a wheelchair, and now she uses sticks to help her walk. Twice a week, Donato's personal trainer meets with her at the gym in her complex. Mallory Murphy has been with Donato since the beginning and has seen the progress Donato has made. Someone suffers a spinal cord injury or spinal cord stroke, um, it's just, it's life altering. It's so changing and it takes a certain individual to step up to the plate and really, um, you know, work hard to achieve it because it's not easy. Even though Donato can't dance yet, she still participates in stretches and coaches the dancers verbally. I'd say take one day at a time and you never know what's coming because anything can happen at any moment. Doctors say they don't know when Donato will be able to dance again, but she is not letting that phase her. Amanda Clark, WUFT News. Donato was elected president of the University of Florida Extreme Dance Company in April. She plans to graduate with a dual degree in finance and information systems in 2016. Well, WUFT's News at 6 is just getting started. Coming up after the break, the American doctor infected with Ebola has been released from the hospital. We'll hear about what Kent Brantley has more to say about going home. Plus, the latest in Ferguson, where the violence is starting to calm down. We'll be right back. <laughs> 